So in this example, I'd like to help us get set up to compute the area of one leaf of the four-leaved rose. So remember that the four-leaved rose is the polar function that's given by this equation. R of theta is equal to cosine of two theta. In a previous video, we plotted this curve and we found that it looks something like, uh, bear with me here, but it looks something like this. So I'll just plot the one leaf of it. That's not very good. Okay, it looks something like this. There are three other leaves that live over here. And like I said last time when I didn't draw it properly, those are all supposed to be the same. That's the idea. But what we want to do in this example is try to set up an integral that will compute the area enclosed by one leaf of this. Now, if you don't, if you didn't watch the video on how this curve is traced out, I recommend that you do that before you try to do this integral because there are some subtleties here. And first of all, as theta, this point here corresponds to theta equals zero. And as theta increases, we get this portion of the curve. And this point right here corresponds to theta equals pi over four. But the curve then does not, it doesn't just turn the corner real hard here and go back to where it came from. It then proceeds to trace out this portion down here and it loops all the way around before it comes back and closes off this leaf over here. But if we were to reverse things and we, would, we were to let our theta become negative and go in this direction, then the theta going from zero back in the negative direction to negative pi over four, um, that, would that would fill in this curve for us. So this, this point right here at the pole, remember the pole, um, this pole is crossed over many times by this curve, but this pole is given by the angles pi over four and negative pi over four. So in, in some ways, this is the most important step because we've now found that our one leaf is traced out between the values of theta from negative pi over four to positive pi over four. So these are the boundaries of our theta. All right, and so this is gonna, if we start over here at negative pi over four, we start at the pole, it's gonna trace out in exactly the way I'm drawing it right here. It's gonna trace out the lower half of this leaf, and then it's gonna pick up on the upper half and trace out the mirror image, okay? Now, the other thing that we need to remember is the formula for the polar area, and we worked this out in the last video. The area of a polar function is uh, the integral from alpha to beta of one half times this function for the radius, which we called rho in the other video, but this one's written as r, so let's leave it as r, r of theta squared d theta. And so all we have to do now is plug in everything that we've just thought about. So we plug in these boundaries for our alpha and beta and then we plug in this formula, cosine of two theta, in for the radius function here. That whole thing gets squared. And so what we end up with is that our area is equal to, the one half can come out, integral from negative pi over four to pi over four, of our integrand is now cosine squared of two theta d theta. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys work this one out yourselves. Um, but this is the integral itself. So the setup, I thought maybe you could use a little guidance on the setup of it, but you should be able to integrate that yourselves at this point. 